Hello and welcome into the 3D. In this tutorial, I will teach you how you can create this kind of spark effect in Unreal Engine 5. Before we start, this YouTube channel created to support people who want to get educated in animation and video games. If you think this channel is worth the support, and if you want to see more educational tutorials on this channel, hit the subscribe button now and don't forget to like this video. Let's get back to the tutorial and go to your content browser. Then right click on this empty area and create a new folder. This new folder will contain all of our VFX content. So I will rename it as VFX and open the folder by double clicking on this. Once again, inside this folder, right click on this empty space and create a NARA system. Once you click, it will open a new panel for us and giving us four different options for the starting point. This one is what we need, so select the first one, then click the next button. In this page, scroll down and select the simple sprite verse emitter, click on the plus icon and hit finish. So since we are making a spark effect, I will call this one spark ns and ns means NARA system. Double click on this and open the system. Give it a few seconds until it is loading. This is the emitter that comes with the selected template and I think we can rename this as let's call this one spark emitter and this emitter will generate our spark effect. If you look at the left panel you will see the preview of our emitter and this is what we have in our scene. However, the effect is barely visible because of the background. So, before we start, I want to make some changes on the preview panel. If you go under the windows and click on the preview scene settings, mine was already enabled, but if you can't see this panel, go under windows Click on that and it should open the panel on the right side of your screen. Once you see the panel, expand the environment settings, disable the show environment option and I will change the environment color to a darker gray. Personally, I prefer to use these settings while I'm working on the Nitra system and it is increasing the visibility of the effect. So for the next step, we will be working on the settings of our emitter. First thing that I want to play is Initialize Particle Settings. Click on that and make sure you are on the selection panel. Actually, since we don't need this, we can close the preview scene settings. So click on that, go to the selection panel and find the lifetime mode. Set it to random and make the minimum lifetime value 0.3 and maximum 3 seconds. Now our emitter giving random lifetime to our particle between 0.3 to 3 seconds. After this, find the surprise size mode, change it to random uniform and make the minimum value 2 and for the maximum just keep it 10. Finally, for the color, you can make it any color that you like, but for now, I will give it a red color. Then, I will click on this little arrow next to the color, go under Make, and select the Read from User Parameter option. This will create a color parameter in the Details panel, so we will be able to control this parameter outside of the Nitra system. Let me explain this with an example. If I import this system to my scene, then if you go to the details panel, 
Now you will see that we have a color attribute that we can control outside of the Nitra system. So let's go back. Next, we will look at the spawn burst instantaneous settings. On the selection panel, find the spawn count settings. Click on the arrow next to the spawn count and search for random range int. Make the minimum 30 and maximum 50. After this, find the particle spawn on your emitter, click on the plus icon and search for add velocity. Once you add velocity, you will see that the particles start moving. On the selection panel, we need to change the velocity mode to incon. As soon as we change the settings, you will see that the movement of the particles changed. After this, find the velocity speed, click on the arrow next to this setting and add random range float to this attribute. Make the minimum 100 and maximum 1000 or maybe 800. Great, we can already see some change. Finally, set the cone angle to 60. By changing this number, you can increase or decrease the angle as much as you like. I will keep it 60. Now, let's find the particle update on the emitter. Click on this plus icon and search for scale sprite size by speed. Change the minimum scale factor x and y to 0.1, then change the maximum scale factor x to 1 and y, I will make it 10. Let's go back to the particle update again, click on this plus icon and add gravity force. Now the particles start falling down but we need to change the gravity settings. Let's add random range vector to the gravity, then make the maximum z value minus 980. Finally, go to the sprite render settings and change the alignment to the velocity aligned. Great, this is what we have created. Let's compile and minimize this panel. If I scroll down on the details panel, there is an option called for solo so we can see what we have created. You will see that it is really hard to see our particles because of the selection outline and this is the first thing that I would like to change. Go under edit, editor preferences, search for outline and untick the use selection outline setting. Now we can easily see the particles. Let me rotate it 180 degrees on this axis. This is what we have created and there is still some settings that I want to change. However, if we set this one to a loop first, it will make it easier for us. Go back to your system, find the emitter state settings and change the loop behavior to infinite. Then from this value, you can decide the duration of the loop, but I will keep it 2 seconds. Let me check. Great, the loop is working, but you will realize that our particles do not have any collisions. So they are flying through objects. To fix this, go to the particle update, 
click on this plus icon and add collision. Compile, minimize this panel and let's see. I'm happy with the result, but as a last step, I will go under the details panel, find the color settings that we have created and change it to any color that you like. Also, if you increase these values, maybe something around 100, it will make a glow effect. We can even try to increase it more. Play around, change the numbers and see what you can create. Let's press play. This is the final result and that was it for today. As a final word, if you'd like to see more content on this channel, please comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching, I see you guys next time.